All right. Good afternoon. Welcome our, to our Virginia Home Sunday afternoon worship service for Sunday, February 28th. It is the second Sunday of Lent. And as um, usual lately, I want to thank my wife, the Reverend Stephanie Hamilton, for joining us um, with some of the readings and prayers today. She's joining us from our, our home in Bonaire, the, our plant-filled porch, in, um, enclosed porch in Bonaire, and I'm here in my office at the Virginia home. So let's begin with our traditional call to worship that we will say together, then sing together. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Let's pray together. <clears throat> Artist of souls, you sculpted a people for yourself out of the rocks of wilderness and fasting. Help us as we take up your invitation to prayer and simplicity that the discipline of these 40 days may sharpen our hunger for the feast of your holy friendship and what our thirst for the living water you offer through Jesus Christ. And Lord, even though we are separated physically, we still worship together in spirit and pray together the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Psalm 22 verses 23 through 31. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. And Christians, we have met to worship. Christians, we have met to worship. Christians, we have met to worship and adore the living God. Will you pray with all your power while we try to preach the word? All is vain unless the Spirit of the Holy One comes down. Christians pray and holy manna will be showered all around. Is there here a trembling jailer seeking grace and filled with fears? Is there here a weeping Mary pouring forth a flood of tears? 
Tell them all about the Savior, how in Christ the lost are found. Pray, oh, pray, and holy manna will be scattered all around. Let us love our God supremely, let us love each other too. Let us pray for all earth's people, till our God makes all things new. Christ will call us home to heaven, at the table we'll sit down. Christ will welcome us and serve us, living manna all around. And now we enter into our time for prayers of the people. Let us pray. God of the covenant, you call us to be fruitful servants within creation and to offer our lives as the foundation of your realm. We lay before you the desires of our hearts that we may be transformed by their fulfillment. Lord of hope, it has been a long year a year of fear, of anger, of grief. Be near us and help us to be near you. Help us to find the hope of your good news in the midst of so much bad news. Help us to be your good news in a world that so sorely needs it. As we come bringing our prayers, help us to also make time to be quiet. To be quiet and to listen to your still small voice calling us to love just as you have loved us, calling us to be our true selves, who you are creating us to be every day. If there are prayers you would like to add, you can do so now, knowing that God hears us whenever and wherever we pray. Grant, O oh God, that the prayers we offer may be your channel for new and abundant life, not only hoped for, but worked for through faithful word and deed and transformation. Amen. Our second reading is from Genesis. Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 through 7 and 15 through 16. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be, be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her. And moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her and she shall give rise to nations kings of peoples shall come from her. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. But now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. T'was 
was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first Next scripture, <clears throat> excuse me, comes from Mark, comes from Mark chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This also is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Some of you may have heard me say before that I am more and more uncomfortable with the depiction of Jesus as king, whether in art or in words. This passage touches on why. Matthew's version of this is where Peter makes the bold statement that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, and he is blessed, which is where our story picks up here in Mark. Jesus begins to tell the disciples being the Christ means that he will suffer. He will be tortured, killed, but then he will raise from the dead in three days. That does not match Peter's idea and understanding of what the Christ should be like. The Christ will be a leader. He will become king and those following him will sit in places of honor and power under him. That's what Peter is imagining. So Peter pulls Jesus aside and rebukes him. I always find that strong words that Peter rebukes Jesus. Peter tells Jesus that he has it all wrong. But before Peter can go any further, Jesus looks at him in the eye and tells him, get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Jesus did not come to set up an earthly kingdom. He came to change lives through love and sacrifice. Peter didn't like hearing that because it would mean he also would have to live a life of sacrificial love, not one of earthly power. I think many Christians, probably most of us, if we're really honest, are like Peter. We want to follow a Savior who is all-powerful and will transfer some of that power to us, his followers. 
not a Christ who suffered, gave up his life, and asked us to be willing to do the same thing. There are many Christians who want the United States, or whatever country they are from, to be a Christian country where the law forces everyone to abide by a morality based on their understanding of Scripture. That view is not found in the Gospels. Jesus never tried to overthrow the Romans who were ruling over Israel at the time. He didn't try to set up a kingdom anywhere on earth. He came to love, and he commanded us to love in ways that go against earthly ideas of power. Jesus' power is the power of love, not of law. This Lenten season, as we travel with Jesus toward Jerusalem and the cross, I hope we will be reminded of the power he showed in love and sacrifice and work to live our lives by that kind of power. For that is the kind of king we do follow. Amen. And to do that, we need to daily ask God to be our vision. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence my life. Be thou my wisdom, and thou my true word. I ever with thee, and thou with me, Lord. Thou my Redeemer, my love thou hast won. Thou in me dwelling, and I with thee one. Riches I heed not, nor vain empty praise. Thou mine inheritance now and always. Thou and Thou only, first in my heart. My King of heaven, my treasure Thou art. My King of heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's choice, O bright heaven sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. Now hear the benediction. God of Sarah and Abraham, long ago you embraced your people in covenant and promised them your blessing. Strengthen us in faith that with your disciples of every age, we may proclaim your deliverance in Jesus Christ to generations yet unborn. Amen. And now, may you be blessed this afternoon. May the Lord, mighty God, bless and keep you forever. Grant you peace, perfect your eyes and see his face and his grace forever. May the Lord mighty God bless and keep you forever. Amen. Thank you all for joining us. And as always, I want to thank my wife, Stephanie, for joining and leading in these readings and the prayer today. Now on this Lenten Sunday, go in faith, hope, and love. Thank you for joining us.